Hello, welcome to my channel. Here's the second colored pencil portrait of a dog. This one has slightly different colors. I'm going to take you through the drawing process. Let's have a look. First, I'm going to do a little bit of sketching. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the reference. So the reference, as you can see, is not the best. But I thought that it was just good enough for me to be able to pull it off. There are some details missing and I had to examine some other photos of the dog and I had to improvise a little bit and add some parts of the body which were missing. This one also is going to be a vignette because here I also thought that it would be beneficial to omit some parts of the body and go for a classic portrait. After all, I did the same thing with the first portrait of a dog uh, because they were, all, uh, they were both commissioned by the same person. So I thought why not do them the same on the same paper, in the same technique, with the same approach. Now I started with some burnt ochre and burnt sienna for the ear on the left side. If you look at the re reference uh, you will see that, and the reference will also be in the description, you will also see that um, the light source is coming from the right side. The left side is darker, it's considerably darker, which is why I had to prepare myself to use darker colors on this side. But uh, when I was making a selection of colors, I thought that maybe I was going to use a little bit more of the yellowish tones, but I ended up using a lot more of the reddish tones with a combination of uh, beige and some cinnamon. I used a lot of that burnt sienna that I started out with on the ear, but I had to additionally make that ear uh, darker by using uh, some browns and some dark sepia even, because uh, that part of the ear is facing away from the light source, it is in the shadow. Of course for this lighter hair on, the, on this inner part of the ear, on the inside, I had to use some lighter colors so that I could pull those uh, lighter hairs on top of the darker ones or at least on top of the shadow areas. With the top of the head I had to improvise and, uh, uh, and just hope that I would get the shape of the head right because uh, like I said uh, some of these things were simply not in my reference photo. Now here I zoomed in a little bit because I started working on the eyes and I first put in the pupil which is the darkest bit here and then I went around it with some dark sepia and then again with a little bit of black around the edge and I added some lighter tones on the iris here and there. The, there is a catch light in the other eye and the the one the catch light on the in the eye on the left which I've just done is kind of more subdued. Here, uh, here on the right side, it was a little bit more conspicuous. I decided to use a white colored pencil. I really wanted the catch light to stand out, and then I went back and decided to add another one on the other side as well, just for the sake of symmetry. But like I said, this one is a bit more subdued, so I made it a bit more subdued in my drawing as well, and I used a light gray rather than a white colored pencil. But then I moved on to the nose, and this is also mostly fairly dark with just a few details, but there are a few uh, lighter parts around the edges, around the nostrils, which I also did with a light grey. And then I used a combination of some pinkish tones <coughs> to do the 
town. Now, uh, this is not uh, the order that you would normally do things when you're drawing a portrait. I just feel like um, the eyes are such an important part of the portrait, and uh, when you get those right, and when you get those right, that really kind of uh, motivates you to go on with the drawing process because they give character the, to the whole portrait and that's why I kind of want to do those first. But after, after I've done the interesting bits, the interesting details, the eyes, the nose and the tongue, I had to move on with the rest of the fur. The fur on this left side is going to be darker because it's in the shadow side. But I combined several different colors to achieve the color that I that I wanted. But I've used uh, a lot of that burnt sienna again, with a little bit of some browns and some other colors. Now the interesting thing about drawing portraits of dogs is that uh, a lot of these reference photos are taken by the owner, and uh, they're kind of the, the photo is kind of taken from above and uh, the dog is kind of looking up a little bit and when you isolate the dog's head and the neck they tend to appear a little bit more robust than they actually are in real life <laughs> That's that happens because when you're looking at them from above you're not just looking at their neck but, but you're also looking at uh, a bit of the shoulder and the chest area. So what happens when you try to isolate the head, uh, the neck area appears a little bit thicker. So I'm not really sure how much the viewers are able to understand that uh, when they're looking at a portrait like this, a vignette like this, because like I said I have to isolate it onto the paper and that maybe changes the impression of the viewer uh, about the uh, about the dogs built about what they actually what their body actually looks like in real life because both of these dogs are, are a little bit more slender a little bit thinner in real life uh, uh, than they appear on the reference when you just isolate the head and the neck area that's why one of the things that I like to do is uh, I like to narrow down that uh, neck area just a little bit. I try not to overdo it because I have to stay true to the reference to a certain degree. But I I take away, away a little bit from that shape to to bring it to look closer to uh, what the dog actually looks like in real life. So these are just some of the distortions that you have to deal with uh, when drawing portraits. But a few more words uh, about the drawing process now before I continue talking about the references and the portraits. So here I uh, pulled some very light marks on top of those uh, brownish and yellowish tones. That's because that part of the, let's say, eyebrow and forehead area is raised a little bit and it's facing the light source on the right. So I went in with some considerably lighter marks using a light beige and even a touch of ivory colored pencil. The ivory colored pencil, uh, pencil is uh, much lighter but it also has a slight yellowish component to it which is what I want because uh, some parts of the dog's fur appear very light and almost kind of yellowish. Uh, but it's not always easy to interpret the exact color. It's uh, better to focus on the overall values and kind of try to adjust the colors later because this surface allows you to do that. And I've just remembered that I forgot to mention the materials I'm using because, uh, like in the previous one, I'm using Faber Castell Polychromos colored pencils on a 1000 grit wet dry sandpaper. So let me get back to uh, what I was saying about the references. The, the references, like I said, weren't great, but I thought they would be just good enough. Uh, 
that's because I was uh, drawing a portrait of an animal and there is less pressure than when you're drawing portraits of people because it's easier for people to recognize uh, whether a, a person, another person uh, looks uh, the way they should or not, whether you've achieved likeness or not. With pets I think you have just a little bit more freedom, just a little bit more room to improvise and fill in some of the gaps um, uh, f from the things that you can't really make out from the from the reference. Uh, now, if I got uh, if I were doing a portrait of a person, I probably uh, wouldn't decide. I probably wouldn't accept these reference photos, and uh, I would uh, try to look for higher quality ones. But for drawings of dogs, I thought these were good enough, and uh, I think they turned out fine. Considerably lighter tones here on the on the right side, with a little bit more of this ray, uh, or a lot, a lot more of this light beige red color. Because what I'm trying to do with these lighter marks is I'm trying to create a feeling of depth because uh, we have these shadow areas in between those lighter hairs, and some of the hairs which are sitting on top of the others are kind of sticking out, they're catching a bit more light from above. So by using lighter and darker colors I'm trying to suggest to the viewer that there is depth and that further there is there, there's a lot of hair there and that some of the hairs are in the shadow and others which are on top are a little bit lighter because they're closer to the light source. Moving on to the other ear and I here also here I also had to improvise a little bit because I couldn't see uh, the exact shape in the reference. Uh, again, I used a bit more of the burnt sienna initially for the darker areas, for the shadow areas, and then uh, in the middle. I used a little bit of brown and then I started working on top of that with some lighter colors but <clears throat> the right side of the ear or the part of the ear which is facing to the right is going to be lighter because of the light source and now I'm just kind of going back and refining the texture on the top of the head or in the forehead area and around the ears and making some adjustments, kind of going back and forth to check uh, whether the uh, left side and the right side match in terms of colors, but at the same time keeping in mind that the left side needs to remain darker because it's in the shadow. And also trying to make these uh, fine uh, hairs um, look a little more fluffy and softer. And to achieve that, uh, what you want to do is you want to avoid pulling really clean lines. Sometimes you just want to drag your pencil using less, less pressure so that, uh, so that you can achieve, achieve slightly blurrier, less defined marks. And that helps you create uh, an appearance of slightly softer fur. Uh, on this right side, the light side, I'm just going to use a lot more of this light beige color and I'm not really going to care too much about how I pull these strokes. This doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to be refining it and I'm going to be working over it. So I just want to kind of block in this lighter area. And uh, once I do that I'll just work on top of it with some other colors. Now, now I'm putting in a little bit more of the burnt sienna and some cinnamon as well as some other colors. But uh, the, uh, the thing that you need to keep in mind while you're working on the texture of the fur is the general shape of the animal. So I always stop and have a look at the reference to see if the shape of the animal resembles uh, what I what I'm supposed to achieve what, what I'm looking at the reference and 
I make some adjustments in terms of the relationships, the larger relationships of lighter and darker areas. Uh, like for example, if the face of, or the head appears too wide, if the snout area is too wide, maybe it needs to be narrowed down a little bit and things like that. But when you're sure that your larger shapes are in place and that they're looking good, then you can just continue working on the textures and on smaller details like these like these longer hairs on the neck and of course as always when you're drawing fur you have to pay attention to the length and the direction of the fur and you have to try to make sure that the length of your strokes and the direction of your strokes matches the length and the direction of the hair and when the hair is longer and thicker like around the neck you want to try to a group uh, your strokes so that they look like tapering clumps of fur and uh, these are now just the finishing touches the drawing is almost done I'm just gonna put my signature here on the left and that's it don't forget to give me a like and subscribe and check out my other videos for more content you should check out my patreon thanks for watching bye for now